Good afternoon. How are you today? Well, there are lots of things we could talk about. There are two issues that are distressing. One, of course, is the war in Ukraine. The leaders of the world wring their hands and they offer a lot of things, but the one thing they don't offer are boots on the ground. And now that there's been this significant push by Russia, it's probably even more daunting for the leaders of the world to commit to perhaps the only remedy that could possibly save Ukraine, which is a countervailing force as opposed to talk, a mission to help Ukraine while we help ourselves, because this will not be the end of Putin's ambition. And he may not cross into any of the NATO countries, not now and maybe never, but there's a very high likelihood when he succeeds at this, following upon how he conducted himself in Syria, that he'll go for Belarus and Georgia and other parts of the Soviet empire that he would rebuild. There were some concerns about, you know, nuclear weaponry last night because the forces of Russia seized a nuclear power plant. Well, a nuclear power plant is not itself a weapon. Of course, you can conduct yourself so poorly that you can have a terrible event like happened at Chernobyl or happened uh, in Three Mile Island many years ago. But I believe that the seizure, and we're presuming a certain amount of competence on Putin's part, that the seizure was part of his scheme to deny power to the people, electric power, and to otherwise cut them off from fuel and food, uh, even from residences by bombing them. In other words, chase the people away, occupy the zone by making it, well, unsupportable to any kind of lifestyle that is survivable. So I expect we'll continue, continue in this way and he will continue intensifying and escalating and we will beat our breasts but having no effect. The second thing that concerns me is a person who has no business being a U.S. Senator, and it is the minority leader in the Senate, McConnell. Now, you know, we called him Moscow Mitch, and he hasn't tripped over onto that issue. But what he has done is he has criticized the nominee to the Supreme Court, just Judge Jackson, because she was a public defender, and he considers her soft on crime. He considers her soft on crime because she defended an accused right to due process, fundamental fairness, the right to counsel, the Sixth Amendment, you know, the kinds of things that we consider so essential to fair proceedings to determine whether somebody committed an offense or not. And we also have the notion of punishing a person so gravely that it's a violation of the Eighth Amendment that is cruel and unusual punishment. So why would you attack any lawyer for fighting and upholding the Constitution in the case of a criminal proceeding? And how much better is it to have a judge on the court who has gotten two degrees from Harvard, who has been a trial lawyer for the defense, who has served as a trial judge and a court of appeals judge. In some areas, she has more experience than some of the people who are on the Supreme Court. She is an outstanding nominee. And how are the Democrats defending her? They're going out and they're saying, oh, yeah, but don't you know, her family is uh, very strong in law enforcement. That is not the defense. The defense is that to criticize a person as a lawyer who actually upheld what a lawyer is supposed to do as a defense counsel. Also, consider the fact that she took some risk to go and defend those people in Guantanamo. And here's the thing about that. I, I interviewed Nancy Hollander uh, and put it on a podcast. There was, there was serious danger in doing that. And the other thing that is amazing is that they won those cases because you're entitled to notice of charges. This is not supposed to be Kafka-esque. 
You're entitled to counsel. You're entitled to discovery, notice of the charges, and a full and fair and open hearing. This is the kind of person that should be on the Supreme Court, and McConnell's the kind of guy that shouldn't be in the Senate or be charged with representing anyone, given his defects of character and truth and his position as a leading senator in our U.S. government. So that's what I'm thinking today, and uh, uh, it's beautiful out. So it's the contrast and balm for the pain we feel at our public servants who are failing us every day. But what else is new? We have to press them to the wall to do their jobs. And perhaps we'll get 40% better chance by the fact that we do that, because they always run afraid of losing their phony baloney jobs. So enough happiness for one day. <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.